Jean Reynolds in a small community in Pike County called Spring Hill in August the 4th, 1948 to the parentage of Jimmy and Louise Reynolds. When I became six years old, we moved to town. How exciting it was to move to town. I began school there in, uh, at the first grade and I graduated from Academy Street High School there in Troy in 1966. And in September of that year, I entered Alabama State University uh, to continue my education. And of course, my father had passed early on and he was a veteran, so we had veteran benefits, but something came up and happened with that, so I could not continue at Alabama State. So I transferred to Trenum, uh, the technical college there in Montgomery. And in 1968, uh, shortly after the Civil Rights Bill passed, the federal government had to integrate all of their offices. And Mrs. Risa, our English instructor at Trenton, chose five students. And I was one of those five students. And um, we passed the test and we were placed. And at that time, it was the Agriculture Stabilization and Conservation Service, the director there. He let me know up front that uh, it was not his choosing to have an African-American in his office. And that he chose me because I put that my ex was neatly inside the boxes. And he said, well, let me show you where you're gonna be working. So he carried me to this back room, like a little closet. And this is where I was gonna be working from. And I had to do the mail. So I was responsible for getting the mail out. And this huge addresser graph machine, I mean, it was humongous, made a lot of noise. Well, after beginning to work there, I could hear the farmers and all talking about me. And they would call me a it, a that, she, how long you been had that, how long is it gonna be here? So, I had to find me a place. And the dresser graph machine kept up so much noise and they, they could not hear me. So I would be singing Amazing Grace, Precious Lord, and I would be praying during that time because I knew in my heart that God had greater things for me. And in June of 1971, those greater things began to happen. I was transferred to Utah Green County to the ASCS office. And at that time, I became the first African American to hold a key position. I became the ACP clerk, Agriculture Conservation Program clerk at that time under the supervision of Mr. Jimmy Smith. But I had been kept in the back so long and not allowed to come to the front when I was in Union Springs until each time uh, I would go up front, Mr. Smith would tell me to come up front, I would end up in the back. So he came one day and he said, why do you keep going to the back? I said, well, when I was in Union Springs, that's what Mr. Wampa told me to sit. He said, well, come follow me. And when he brought me up front, he said, this is your job. This is your seat and this is where I want you to stay, is here. And that's when things began to change for me. Now, one of the major things I faced was discrimination. And you know, being African American is bad enough, but being a, a female African American is even worse. And then I worked with the Department of Agriculture. So you know, 90, 95% male. And of that 90 to 95%, 80 to 85% of them were white males. So I experienced a large amount of discrimination during my career with the Department of Agriculture. One, I remember we were in North Alabama at a training session, and my supervisor and I was walking down the hallway of the hotel and one of the directors from another county said, well, here come this nigger lover and his nigger. My supervisor put me to the inside wall, 
put his hand in his pocket and we kept walking. It didn't bother me to the point that it angered me. I felt sorry for the man because I realized that he didn't understand that God loved me just like he loved him. He just made us different colors. These are some of the things that I experienced. We went to South Alabama to work the storm damage there in 1990. While there, we went into a farm. The people saw us pass by. When we was leaving the farm after we finished the inspection, they had locked us in. We couldn't get out. So naturally, we had to go across on someone else's farm to try to get out. After we got out of that farm, we went to get us something to eat. We went to this little country store while there. We, all we wanted was some cheese, bologna, some sauce meat, and a drink. But they said they would serve the man that was with me, who was it was Thomas, but they were not gonna give me any. I couldn't buy any. Cause Thomas had never experienced anything like that. So he won't begin to argue with the man. I said, no, don't do that, Thomas, let's go. And of course the man had some nasty words to say to Thomas, so we left the man's store. And these again are some of the things that I experienced. But if someone asks me to what degree it bothered me, Again, I feel like I felt sorry for those people because, see, I knew who I was when I went there. So nothing they could say or do could change that. I knew then, I know now, how special I am, and I still feel sorry for those people. All they did was motivate me to show them and to let them know that I'm everything except what they think I am, meaning that they could not even think to that level of thinking to know just how special I am. Amen.